and he went to Jerusalem and then went to the heavens and he was greeted by all the prophets in all the heavens as we know the story. The reason I'm bringing this is not because only it's a it's the time of the year where we celebrate and observe this blessed event, the Isra al-Miraj, but also to tell people that inna ma'al-usri yusra, with all the sorrow and all the, the, the sadness and everything, all the bad that's going on in, in the world, there is something good that comes with it or comes out of it. A couple of weeks ago I had the honor to stand before you and it was a tragic day for the entire ummah, all across the globe, when that horrific attack on our brothers and sisters in New Zealand, when 50 plus souls were, you know, murdered and a lot were injured. The same day, one of the sisters of this congregation embraced Islam. And we also had some visitors that were not Muslim that embraced, that are studying and looking into Islam. So, what I'm saying is that with that sorrow, I left from here, I came in here all sad, and I was, but I left with my spirits up because I saw one sister that accepted Islam despite all the craziness that's going on in the world, especially on that day, when she could have said, I want nothing to do with this. She could have said that just as easy. Everybody else that saw that could say, you know what, these people, I mean, they have a lot of drama, I want no part of it. But no, she accepted Islam and she took shahada right here in front of everybody. May Allah make it easy for us, for us and her, and Ya Rabbi Thabitna, and on your word and in your path along the Now, this large population of Muslims is increasing, especially after the events of New Zealand. A lot of masajid in the area, in the country, have received, and I've seen this myself, bouquets of flowers and letters, letters of support and emails just got one yesterday, actually, where this man, he's a professor in one of the colleges in our area, he said, I'm a professor in this college, and I want to know if it's okay with Muslims if I fast. And he said, I'm a Christian. And he said, I do not want to offend my brothers and sisters in the faith. And my question was, is if I fast during Ramadan, would this be offensive because I'm not a Muslim? And he said, I believe that my faith would increase and I will become a greater, to a greater, I'll come to a greater understanding of Islam. And he said, of the Prophet, what the Prophet Muhammad, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught. That's his quote. So I responded to him and I invited him and then he said, thank you for this warm message and my heart is now at peace to give such response. I didn't say anything magical. I said what any Muslim would say to anybody else. You're welcome anytime, brother. أفشوا السلام بينكم. What the Prophet ﷺ said. ألا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه تحاببتم. Should I tell you about something that if you do, you will love one another? But I ask Allah to us. أفشوا السلام بينكم. Spread peace among each other. And so many other letters that we've received, and I'm sure this message has has done the same too. You receive these hands extended for your help and your support. Anything you need, we are here for you. What is it that we can do to support you? And a lot of people are going around the masajid to stand as at guard, you know, and to work, volunteer their time to protect the masjid and the congregation. Maybe they couldn't, maybe it, it's, and it's a, some, a symbol of unity, which is something that we really need among each other and among our community. Now, what I want to talk about in this khutbah, besides addressing the Israel and Miraj, I want to address a very important topic that we, as Muslims, whether born into the religion or new Muslims or people who are learning about Islam or people who have, you know, one foot, you know, up in the head and one to the back, and I'm still not, you know, I'm still on the edge. I'm not really, I'm not really sure about if this is what I want to do or not. We got some advice for us and for them. For those who have friends or co or coworkers. Uh, or who are interested in the religion. Now here's the thing, while people are generally have good intentions, <coughs> we sometimes tend to do the wrong thing even though we have a good intention. The intention is not to harm anyone or to give bad information, generally speaking, but sometimes it happens. So the lack of experience with dealing with people who are learning about Islam or people who are 
born into or, or be people who are just embrace Islam, you know, a short time ago, maybe about to or a long time ago, we see this. You start giving, and I'm talking about us, or maybe people who have been in the religion but have no better, you know, good understanding, they will start giving too many good advice at once. Too many good advice at once. That's gonna overwhelm the person that you're talking to. You give too many bad advice to people. Maybe you say something good, maybe you say something bad, and that person, no, no, he doesn't know any better if he didn't research it and ask somebody who's knowledgeable, somebody who needs to be, he needs to be asking. Maybe what happens is that he starts taking these ideas into account and he starts, you know, just applying them because that's what he was told. <clears throat> and we start giving them all these bad advices mm -hmm. that will eventually harm them and will overwhelm them. <clears throat> what we do sometimes is that we try to lure people into, now, okay, now that you took Shahada, go ahead and change your name. You need, you must have a Muslim name. Says who? You must have, you must take and call yourself Muhammad, Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, Abid, Abid, etc. Why? There's no Islam that, how many Muslims came into Islam at the time of, the, of, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? We're not Arab. And we, as Muslims, name ourselves these names that are not originally Arab. So what kind of address are we giving? No, 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 John is not. Well, John came from Yahya, correct? Mary, Mary came from Mary. So why are we giving bad advice to people who, you know, and, and try to force them to change the name, for example? The other thing is, now you must change the way you dress. You know, we're at home, you got to have your beard all the way down to the floor, and you have, it has to be this way, or you're not a Muslim. This is one of the things I've heard personally, some people may relate. They also try to push them to learn too quick, too soon. Too much, too soon. Which will make them get, in a way, annoyed by all this. Or kind of like when you go to the library and you check out all these books, and you say, I'm gonna read them all, and then you're excited about it, and then nothing happens. You end up maybe returning all of them without reading them. Now you must remove all your tattoos, brother. Sister, you must do this, you must do that. And you make them, instead of walking up to Islam and step by step, step by step, we try to, now we're pushing them out. That we, I mean, it was great that they came in, came into the religion, and now we are pushing them out. The other thing is, brother, sister, you must learn Arabic. You must, okay. Everybody wants to learn Arabic. Not everybody here speaks Arabic, otherwise this people would be in Arabic, true? So, it's not a must. It is good if you did. It's the word of the Quran, it's the word of Allah. It's good if you did, but I'm not gonna make it mandatory on somebody, especially somebody like me who doesn't know much about this. Oh, you need to have this done. Or you need to understand and read the Quran in Arabic immediately. Now start reading, brother. Now you need to start. No. Make them fast during Ramadan, Khamis, Ithnan, Monday, and Thursday, and all the extras and whatnot, and you should and you should do this, and you should do that. Now you're a Muslim, you're one of us. You're obligated to all this. Before you start giving these advice, know what you're talking about. Know how you're addressing these people. They're fragile. You can't be throwing all this stuff and dumping all this stuff on them immediately. Brother, now that you became a Muslim and your family is not, you must boycott them. Leave them. Says who? Says who? Has nothing to do. What, what about the What about that? Does that only apply to me if I'm a Muslim and if my parents are Muslim? No. I will not tell anyone to abandon this family because that is your blood. If you don't know the knowledge, ask the people of the message, the people of knowledge, the scholars, the people that know about this, if you didn't know. Now here's the thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in a couple of verses, said, what more? Oh, in one of the ayahs it says, What more? And that is salat or sabr alayhi. In order, salat, not only salat, but all the rituals of Islam, all the actions of Islam on your parents, on your family, on your family, on your children, on your household, was sabr alayhi. Was sabr alayhi and be patient with them. The hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Murah ala ibn sabr, teach them when they're at seven. And it says, Start, you know, holding them responsible and accountable when they're at ten. Not right away, why did you pray? Why did you miss? Why did you make a little properly? Why did you? It's not that it come in like that. And so, we also tend to, and we hear this a lot, Nashr al-Dawah al-Islam al-Qari'i, Nashr al-Qari'i. 
We started inviting people to Islam by spreading false things just because I want to say the right thing that I know you will like just to attract you. Kind of like if you go to a car salesman and you want to buy a car, no offense, but, and they try to lie to you, and some of them I've seen, they will try to lie to you and try to take, tell you things that are absolutely, that don't make sense, but just to convince you to buy this car because this is what you need, and you need it right now or that deal is going to go. And then later on, you, and you fall for the trap, and then later on you find out that he lied to me. Now I hate the car. You know, I hate all the cars because of what he did. So imagine if you do something to Islam, and you bring something to the way of life, and you lie to him, or you, you lie to him, and you, you tell him false things that don't exist. How is he going to believe in you? And what kind of impression are you going to give on him? First impression is always the one that's going to last. And if you give him a bad one, or you give her a bad one, then it's on you. You lose credibility like that. You tell me something false like that, I'm not going to believe you. You tell somebody, especially who is new into the religion, about Islam or something that is not true, he's not going to believe you or she's not going to believe you. And she, they're going to discredit you. Say, oh, you know what, I'll listen to you, but not to that person. Because I had an, a bad experience with him or her. What are the examples that you start making up hadith or things that sound like hadith? Oh, I'm, you, you, start, you, you try to say them in Arabic uh, to make it sound like it's believable. Or you try to come up with things to sound, make it sound like hadith or a narration of a alim or a scholar or a sahabi or somebody like that because you know what, I really want, want what's good for you. So uh, this is what, what the Prophet said. Or this is what he would do. How do you know? How do you know this is what he would do? Or you, this is what he would do? Islam in general, is, Islam is a qadiyah, it's a just, just cause. And it's clear. Doesn't need any, any secret. There are no secrets that we have to lie and hide. It doesn't have anything that we need to, you know what, I'm not going to tell you this now, or I'm, I'm going to hide this from you, and this is what you need to know, and etc. Islam doesn't have, everything is an open book. All the cards on the table, like they say. Anything you want to know about, it's right there. There's no need to lie, no, nobody, no reason to deceive anybody just because I want you to believe in, in, in a certain thing. Be truthful and sincere with them. With those new Muslims or somebody who's interested about Islam, with wisdom and with kindness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Baqarah, nasa bibirri wa nasawna anfusakum, wa antu kithuna kitab afala taqinu. Do you order people to do good and you forget about yourselves? And you are one of those who recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell them to take it easy on themselves. And tell them to seek knowledge from someone who knows. You know that saying, don't, you know, I'm going to throw the book at you, like that you go before the judge and he throws the book at you now that you provided all the laws and now he wants to apply everything on you? Now here's what I want to say about this. Don't throw the book at somebody who's barely learning or who's barely coming into Islam. This is from A to Z, and this is what you need to start applying effective immediately. Whoa, hold on a minute. Where did that come from? Remember the ayah or the ayah that talked about al khamr the alcohol? At first, it didn't say haram and right away, because the Prophet knew that he's coming to a new era, a new, uh, a new life. He's spreading this new thing, new teaching. A lot of people don't know it. A lot of people are going to reject it. That's why he did not start telling people about the don'ts and don'ts and don'ts from the get-go until he convince them that this is the religion, and then baby steps, starting teaching them things to do this, or don't do this now, or don't come to salat, don't come to salat, don't come to salat, don't establish salat while you were intoxicated. He didn't say don't drink it at all right, right away, but he said that, and then later it was prohibited, and became haram. And invite to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom, with kind word. And if you want to, not debate, if you want to have a dialogue, not fight and argue and, you know, I'll, I'll go, you know, I'll have all this madness because you're going to drive them away. Now here's the thing. A, 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 a block of ice is not something you can drink or benefit from, you know, you can't, you can't ingest it unless you want to crush it, but you got to wait for it to melt and then you can use it. You can drink it cold and cool so it can, so it can cool you down, etc. You can't just go ahead and, and go to it right away. Some things, same thing is when somebody comes to the culture or something or something or, or religion. You've got to give them time. Some people are fragile, and all this stuff is new to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet says, Al-Mu'min al-Qawi, Ahabu ila Allahi min al-Mu'min al-Qawi, wa fi kulli That strong movement 
It's better to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the, the weak, but both have good qualities. We're not going to discredit somebody who has less iman than the other, because innama mu'minun ikhwah, and we are all the same. To build strength in everything, time is needed. You can't build a structure in one day, and it's impossible. You can't make, execute a project, plan and execute it in one hour. That's, can't do that. You cannot expect somebody to learn about everything, everything about everything, immediately. Now this is something, now there's an advice I want to give to the new Muslims after this is the great inshallah. أقول لكم لهذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم قدر الله وانتم مؤمنون. Yeah. Yeah. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عبيد كل المتقين ولا عبادة إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن الصالحين my respected brothers and sisters, those especially who came into new to Islam, or if this is something you want to tell to somebody, this is what I tell those newcomers. Congratulations on the decision you have made. I know it wasn't easy. It's not something that you just got up in the morning and said, Today I'm a Muslim. It's not like it doesn't work like that. There's a lot of process, a lot of study, and a lot of research, and a lot of questions, and a lot of hesitation and doubt and back and forth and back and forth until you decide this is it, I'm convinced now, I'm going to do it. So congratulations to especially the sister that was here a couple weeks ago and did it raise this time. And I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us and herself and all those the strength and to plant our feet on his right path of man. The first term or the first the first thing I want to say is, you know, know that saying, baby steps, we don't. It doesn't apply only to children when they're walking. It applies to everything. Be strong and don't allow anyone to take advantage of you and to mislead you. Three sources, at least, you can use three trusted sources I would read, lead you to or I would guide you to, to, to uh, according to you, is the Quran, the Sunnah and Hadith, and also a trusted Imam. Somebody who knows, somebody who knows his stuff, we just put it like that. And then not Trust internet, share Google, both the internet, both the this and that. You can't get anything from, from there. It's just not trusted. Unless it's something really, really that everybody is going to, and some of the and scholars will say, yes, this is a good source. Other than that, don't trust it. Take your time and use all the space and all the, all the space that you need. Be serious about wanting to learn. Don't just say, I'm serious and just don't do it. You got to take the initiative. The thing is, quality is all we need, not quantity. So, <coughs> So if somebody tells you you need to pray this extra amount of uh, this extra amount of prayer and you need to read the Quran so many times in the Ramadan and this and that, what do you gain out of that? You know, at that? What do you gain with that? If you don't understand it, don't comprehend it, and apply it in your life, it's really not doing you any good. Get to know the Creator by knowing His attributes and His names: Ar Rahman, the Beneficent; Ar Rahim, the Merciful; Ar Razak, the Sustainer. And believe in those and know what the why did, why does he have subhanahu wa ta'ala all these names? Why does this name name apply in this situation, in this ayah, in this verse of the Quran, and not the other one? Okay? Al Qawi, the 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 Mayri, Al Raza, Al Wahid, the one. Okay? All these names, keep to know them and study them. It is key to understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And understand one thing. You don't need a middleman to approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he says وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close. Not tell them I am close. I am close. So, we don't need somebody in the middle to a secretary or receptionist or a middle man to connect us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he says it right here. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ O Muhammad, O Yahya Muhammad, if they ask you, I'm here. Know the Prophet وسلم, the way he lived and his companions and what he taught. Choose good friends. It doesn't mean give up your old friends because a lot of them are good as well. But choose good friends that will guide you to the right path. People of moral character, keep those. Don't give them up. You don't give up, don't give them up because you may influence them to become Muslims one day. You're not Muslims in family. You're not. You're not Muslim family. You're. You're not Muslim coworkers. They're gonna have an issue with with, with you becoming a Muslim. That's a given. It, it happens. Every, every Muslim will tell you, yes, I've faced this, I've faced that. That's going to happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace that with sweetness in your heart for all this hardship that you have endured or you're enduring right now. Just give it time. Be kind to them. 
Be kind to your mother, your father, your family. They are your blood. Your friends and boss and co-workers may do the same thing. You may feel, feel you know, face some hardship. That's it. That, that's going to come with the territory. You will lose some friends. That's going to happen because now you're going to not going to hang out with some because they're drinkers, because they're this, they're the other. So what? Allah subhanahu wa taala will replace them. You'll have better character, better characters in your life. You'll have better uh, uh, friends and and and, and such things. But that doesn't mean don't be kind to them. Now. As much as you can, don't be alone. And this is for us as well, Muslims who are born into the religion. Don't be by yourself. Okay? Because in the we have to know that the wolf is going to attack the easy prey, the one that's by itself, the sheep that's by itself. He's not going to go to a flock. He's going to want that one that's by itself. So don't be alone. Be with Jama'ah, a good one. Those who can guide you, those who can support you and teach you. And connect with other reapers. There are a lot of forums, a lot of groups, a lot of things all over the area. You can connect with them. If you have any questions about that, ask the board or ask me. I'll be happy to help. Share your experiences with them. It's going to be similar, but there's going to be a lot of differences as well. Know what's important and know what's more important. Set your priorities. What I need to do and what I don't need to do. Uh, seek your knowledge as well. One does uh, at a time. One, one dose, I'm sorry. One dose at a time. Don't try to take everything. Like the med when you go to the doctor and he gives you this prescription, he doesn't say take everything at once or take it right now before you leave. That's going to kill you. Take doses, a little bit of doses at a time so it can be your cure and you can feel better and get well. <laughs> Learn how to do salat. Learn it properly. Take your time. Take the time and space that you need for that. Because the Quran is actual, the, words, the actual words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, we will need to do it, but don't worry about doing it right now. Nothing says you have, must do it right now. There's no such thing. Will it take time? Yes. Do you have time? Yes. Use it. Another advice, no one knows everything about everything. If somebody says, I'm the most knowledgeable person, that's when he is ignorant. No such thing. No one will know everything. So don't be hard on yourself. Take your baby steps at one step at a time and learn it as you go. And don't, don't, don't allow anybody to be hard on you or try to force you to do things you're not ready to do yet. Don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed with things and with knowledge. Oh, but I must do this and I must do that and I must wear this and I must... No. Take it one bit at a time. It's easier for you and you last forever like that. Other, because other people will do it right away and then next thing you know, next week they're not in Islam anymore. I've seen a lot of these examples. So with this, my brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to the word and implement it in our lives. Amen. And to make us among those who are good guides to people and to others. I ask you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give you salutation and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, inna kahmeenu majeed. اللهم لا تدع في جميعنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا مريضا إلا شافيته ولا مدينا إلا رسلت دينه ولا غائبا إلا رجعته ولا مريضا إلا شافيته ولا مظلوما مسجونا إلا وإلى أهله رددته اللهم بلغنا رمضان يا الله we ask you to grant us the month to put this the month of Ramadan and to accept it from us يا الله يا رب العالمين يا الله we ask you to have mercy upon those who have passed and to have mercy upon our parents and our children and to make us good examples for them and to make them good examples for those who will come after them. Allahumma ameen.